Ishmael, the son who was sent by Abraham and became the father of the Arab nation. Ishmael's story begins with Sarah's slave Hagar, whom Abraham was given because Sarah couldn't bear him children, and continues with Abraham's struggle for the inheritance and his path thereafter. Abraham wanted Ishmael to continue his path and from him, the Hebrew nation would emerge. But it is Sarah's and God's will that the Abrahamic tradition continues in the footsteps of Isaac. Despite this, God blesses Ishmael and gives him the blessing of the Gentiles. According to Islam, Ishmael, the eldest son of Abraham, became the father of the Ishmaelite and Arab nation. God promised Abraham that he would give birth to a son, whose name would be Isaac, and who would be Abraham's successor. It is God's will that the Israeli nation be raised from the family of Abraham alone, and not through cooperation with the nations of the world, but that a new nation be raised miraculously and uniquely. Only after Abraham comes to this realization does God change his name from Abraham to Abraham. Abraham desperately wanted a successor, but Sarah was barren and could not give him a son. The story of Ishmael in the book of Genesis provides a double answer to Abraham and Sarah's desire. The Bible states that Hagar was given to Abraham specifically to bear his sons. Hagar despises Sarah, and Sarah's attitude towards Hagar changes with Abraham's approval of Hagar's expulsion. God promised Abraham that his descendants would be as numerous as the sand on the shore of the sea, and that this would only happen in the land of Canaan. Hagar is just as strong as Sarai and refuses to return to being a slave after being Abraham's wife, so she runs to the desert. The road in the desert leads her to thirst and exhaustion. Hagar had her first encounter with God's angel, who said, Genesis 16 verse 8. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? God had sent the angel to find her in her distress. He means, from where, to where? From Abraham's house to the desert? It doesn't surprise her that he calls her by her first name, Hagar slave Sarai. She must have known since there were many visitors to Abraham's house. To his second statement, where are you going, she did not answer, as she did not know. His second appeal evoked longing, then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. What does he offer her, to return to Sarah and continue to be her slave, to this statement she does not answer at all. In his third statement, he tells her, Many will lie in wait for your seed. Who brings her the such good news? Perhaps he is a God's angel. She is deep in thought and does not respond. In his fourth statement, she was even more surprised when he revealed her. She was the only one who knew about her pregnancy, you are pregnant and will give birth to a son. He also tells her what name she should give the child. Here, she had already discovered his identity. The name you will give to your son is... Ishmael is a reminder of his poverty and suffering, for God has heard your plea. Her son Ishmael will be like her, he will also prefer to wander in the desert, but unlike her, he will not run away from his enemies, he will wage ceaseless battles, his hand will be in everything, and everyone's hand will be in him, yet he will dwell before all his brothers, he will dwell near them, and will not run away like her. She knows who he is but she replaces the messenger with the one who sent him. God of Abraham. The one who heard her prayer and saw her poverty, she calls him El Roy. She called the place, well for life El Roy, because God sees me. Two important events were read by this well. First, by this well, Isaac met Rebekah. The second, after Abraham's death, Isaac lived there. Sarah also believed that the son born to a slave would be considered her son. But Sarah was also afraid, saying, Because my people will not inherit the people of Isaac, indicating Ishmael's protected status under the law. 
Therefore, she demanded that he be removed, so as not to endanger Isaac's situation. When Isaac was growing up, his mother Sarah noticed that Ishmael was abusing him, thereby endangering his physical and spiritual existence. Therefore, Sarah asked Abraham to immediately expel Ishmael and his mother Hagar from their home and to let Isaac have everything that God had promised him, everything belonged to him, and Ishmael would not inherit anything. Then, God agreed with Sarah and said to Abraham, Listen to whatever Sarah says to you. Abraham had a difficult trial, and all the troubles he went through were not as difficult for him as having to send his firstborn son away from his presence. Even in the midst of all the difficulty, Abraham hurried to do God's will. Genesis 21 verse 14 Early the next morning Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. Abraham sent Hagar and his 17-year-old son Ishmael away from his home. Even though he expelled them, he wanted to follow and see his son Ishmael, and to know the path they had taken. Hagar and Ishmael went on their way, and, thanks to Abraham there was no lack of water for many days. When they ran out of water Ishmael was thirsty, he threw himself under the bushes of the desert and said, God of my father Abraham, life and death are in your hands. Please take my soul from me, and I won't die of thirst. God heard his prayer and sent them water. Ishmael and Hagar quenched their thirst and filled them with water for the rest of the journey. God sent an angel to Hagar and Ishmael, and the angel's words were, Genesis 21 verse 17 God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter? Hagar? Do not be afraid, God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Sixteen years ago Hagar was the victim, then God heard her poverty, and today, the child is the victim and God hears his voice. The expulsion of Ishmael from the house of Abraham is one of the most difficult episodes in Abraham's story. The Bible itself testifies that Abraham's response to Sarah's words, to send away Hagar and Ishmael, was the matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son, Genesis 21 verse 11. This is the only time in all of Abraham's stories that he sees God's words as bad in his eyes. Thus he prayed for the wicked of Sodom, and when he went to the binding of Isaac without questions. Only, the removal of Ishmael was bad in his eyes and was not acceptable to him and despite this, he fulfilled God's request. Sarah comes out of the story with the upper hand, God justifies her and instructs Abraham to listen to her voice. The expulsion of Ishmael occurs after the birth of Isaac, and there is a strong connection between the two stories. When Isaac was born, Sarah demanded his name, saying, God has made laughter for me, everyone who hears will laugh over me, Genesis 21 verse 6. The laughter attests to the surprise and impossibility of a 90-year-old woman giving birth and nursing her son. Abraham has trouble obeying Sarah's instructions. In Abraham's eyes, the situation was bad not because of Hagar, whom he was ready to part with, but because Ishmael was his son, it was very bad in Abraham's eyes because of his son. This is the root of the difference between him and Sarah regarding Ishmael. While Sarah considers him her mother's son, Abraham sees him as his son. After being sent away from his home, Abraham secretly went to visit his son Ishmael. Three years after Abraham sent Hagar and Ishmael away, he went to visit Ishmael and swore to Sarah that he would not delay. He arrived at Ishmael's house in the middle of the day and found Ishmael's wife there. He did not get off the camel while Ishmael was picking fruits and dates. He asked her, Where is Ishmael? She replied, He and his mother went to the desert to get fruit and dates. He said to her, Could you please give me some bread and water? 
I'm very tired from my desert journey. She said to him, I have neither bread nor water. He said to her, When Ishmael comes, tell him that an old man from the land of Canaan came to see you and said that the door of the house is not good enough for you. When Ishmael arrived, his wife hinted to him about certain things, and he understood and sent her away. His mother sent for him and got him a wife from her father's house, her name was Fatima. After three more years, Abraham went to see Ishmael again and swore to Sarah that he would not dismount the camel where Ishmael was sitting. He arrived in the middle of the day and found Ishmael's wife. This time, when he asked the woman for bread and water, she immediately retrieved it and gave it to him. Abraham stood, praying to God for his son, and Ishmael's house was filled with all good things and blessings. When Ishmael came, his wife told him everything that had happened, and Ishmael knew that his father had shown him mercy, just as a father shows mercy to his sons. Abraham was 175 years old when he died. And there Isaac and Ishmael meet again after many years to bury their father Abraham. According to the belief of Islam, Ishmael became the father of the Arab nation and Muhammad the Prophet is a descendant of Ishmael. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you for watching, see you next time.